Assalamu alaikum. Today we will, be, we will be discussing about the examination of the motor system. First of all, we will discuss about the components of the motor system, which include the cerebral cortex, the various nuclei associated with the vestibular nuclei, the reticular formation, and the cerebellum, of course, and the skeletal muscles, which are, of course, the main component. So, uh, first of all, we will discuss about the uh, muscle bulk, then the muscle tone, then we discuss about the muscle power. Then we examine the gait of the subject and the coordination of the muscles and some reflexes, which include the superficial and deep reflexes. Now, coming to the muscle bulk, we inspect the muscle and we do not touch it. And then we touch the muscle for uh, looking for any hypertrophy or atrophy of the muscle. And then we measure the circumference of the muscle. The circumference is measured through some landmarks. The landmarks include in the upper limb, we use uh, the elbow joint as the landmark. Um, 5 cm below the elbow joint and 4 cm above the elbow joint. In the lower limb, we use 9 cm below the knee joint and 6 cm above the knee joint. Now coming to the muscle tone. The muscle tone is actually the mild contraction state of the muscle when the muscle is at rest. So first of all, we examine the muscle tone, um, but we have to ask for consent from the subject. So, uh, first of all, we approach it from the right side, approach the patient from the right side. Of Assalamu alaikum, my name is Dr. Edmund Zain and I am going to examine your muscle, muscle tone. Uh, it, it will not be a painful procedure. Do I have your consent? Yes. Okay, so we uh, try the, we apply some resistance just above the, just above the wrist joint and ask the patient to flex the elbow. Yes, the muscle is in fine contraction state. The wrist muscles are okay and the bicep flexes are okay as well. Now we come towards the section of the muscle power. So for examining the muscle power, we used various landmarks. For example, we uh, use the shoulder joint for the upper limb, and then the elbow joint, and then the wrist joint, and then the fingers of the joint. So again, first we use the follow the protocols, greet the patient, then ask, uh, then uh, Explain the uh, procedure to the patient and then ask for the consent. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dr. Ayman Zain. I am going to examine your muscle strength or what you can say the muscle power. Do I have your consent? It will not be a painful procedure. Yes. Okay. So first of all, we use the shoulder joint. Um, can I have your shoulder in an abducted position without flexing your elbow? I will apply some resistance and you will have to up against the resistance. Please abduct your shoulder. Yes, the shoulder is fine. Now I'll ask you to abduct, abduct the shoulder against resistance. Yes, the power of the shoulder joint is very fine. Now coming towards the elbow joint, we'll apply some resistance to the elbow joint just above the wrist joint. Now can you bend your elbow? Yes, it is fine. Now you have to uh, the bended elbow, the flexed elbow, and uh, may I have the permission to extend it kindly. Yes, the elbow joint is also fine. Now we come towards the wrist joint. Now we apply some resistance just above the joint at the area of the palm. Yes. And now, on the opposite side, the resistance can have to extend it. Yes, the wrist joint is also fine. Now, we have to ask you to flex your fingers against the applied resistance. Yes, the flexion is fine. And now, extend kindly these fingers against the resistance. Yes, the extension of the fingers is also fine. Now, beginning with the lower limb. First of all, we ask uh, the, uh, the, we follow the protocols. First of all, we greet the patient. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Alan Zain, Dr. Nimr Zain, and I am uh, going to examine the muscle strength of your lower limb. This will not be a painful procedure. May I have your consent? Okay. So, first of all, I am going to flex your thighs. Again, so, uh, pull your thighs upward against the resistance. Now, I am going to apply the resistance on the opposite side and try to. Yes, like that. So the extension and flexion are just about fine. Now, can you please move your leg from on the outward direction against the resistance? It's fine. And now pull your legs towards 
the body against resistance. The abduction and abduction are also fine. We are going to examine your knee joint without moving your hips. Now kindly pull your uh, leg upwards against the resistance. Yes, the flexion, the extension is fine. And now without moving your hip joint, kindly move your leg downwards against the resistance. Yes. So the knee joint is absolutely fine. Now moving towards the foot. Now we ask the patient to dorsiflex against the resistance applied. Now uh, we start the procedure and apply the resistance and uh, can you please dorsiflex your foot? Yes, the resistance against the resistance, the power is fine. And now uh, I'm going to put the resistance and you will plantar flex your foot. Yes, it is fine. The dorsiflexion and plantar flexion are absolutely fine. The power is normal towards the cerebellar motor tests we ask the patient to rub the heel of one foot over the shin of the other leg can you please try moving your heel over the other leg over the shin of the other leg yes it is very fine so the cerebellum looks intact now moving towards the next test we ask the patient to touch their finger on the tip of the examiner's finger and then onto their nose and do it simultaneously. So can you please try and do that? Okay, so uh, the cerebellar uh, functions look intact. So if this was, if, if the cerebellum was damaged, the patient would uh, strike their finger uh, past their nose, which is called pass point like that or somewhere like that. So the last test we're going to perform today is for this diadocokinesia. We ask the patient to uh, place their hand on the other hand and ask them to pronate and supinate rapidly. And if the cerebellar functions are not intact, this will not happen quite smoothly. And uh, we will see that. Can you please move your arm simultaneously? Pronate and supinate that. Yes, the movement looks absolutely good, it's smooth and so the cerebral functions are intact with the patient and we have a normal subject.